Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Professor Wool and today we're going to be discussing the ongoing maintenance of a micro-segmented data center. So let's remind ourselves where we are. We have a data center that's virtualized and it has a filtering fabric that allows us to write policy governing traffic inside it. We went through a discovery process, we discovered all the applications inside the data center and all the traffic flows that they rely on. We wrote that into a filtering policy that's enforced by the filtering fabric and we crossed the D-Day at which we switched the policy from a default allow to a default deny. We've stopped learning and now any kind of additional traffic that crosses the data center requires some kind of presence in the policy so that it will be allowed. And we need to maintain this. Now when we start thinking about maintenance, we need to realize that the data center is not alone in the world. It's connected. Maybe we have internet connections coming in, reaching various parts of the data center. Maybe we have parts of our estate in the cloud and connections to and from the cloud are entering the data center. Maybe we have business partners that connect to various parts of our data center. All of these external connections come into the data center through firewalls and other filtering technologies that are outside of the filtering fabric and they also have policy in them that needs to allow the traffic going through them each with its own technology. So when we're maintaining all of this we need to maintain it holistically so that all the different filtering technologies work uh, and enforce exactly the same type of policy and don't conflict, contradict each other. Okay, now let's switch gears and think about what's happening in another part of the organization, which is the information security team. People in the information security team need to define a high-level policy of what types of traffic are allowed in the organization. A con convenient and common way for information security people to think about this is to use a tabular format that I've spoken about in the past, where each of the rows in this matrix represents a zone or segment in the network. Likewise, every column represents, an, again, the same zones. And the way to read this matrix is that traffic coming in from this zone, let's say from the business partner zone, and trying to reach this column uh, is legitimate if the services being sent through that direction are listed inside the cell. So we're allowing from the business partner network to the e-commerce area, we're allowing these two services. And the way uh, the information security team uses this is whenever they need to evaluate a change request, they check whether uh, the intersection of the from and to uh, if the, the services listed there match the services that are being requested. If they're, requ if they're matching, then the change request is allowed uh, and maybe even automatically using some kind of zero-touch workflow without any human in the loop. Conversely, if the service that's being requested is different from what's legitimately uh, pre-approved, then it's an exception. Somebody needs to make a, an, in an informed decision. Okay, so this is the way many information security teams work. How does this match the micro-segmentation project that we've been discussing? Well, what happened was we've identified additional zones inside the data center. We've identified specific segments and applications. Each one of these segments now can be documented in the information security policy as its own row. So we no longer have one big fat data center row. We have multiple rows, one for the e-commerce micro segment, one for the PCI micro segment, etc. And of course, each one of these also has its own column. And now we can be more specific. The information security team can indicate that the e-commerce segment inside the data center is allowed to connect to the internet and send emails out. However, the PCI zone is not allowed to do that. This distinction is enforced by the filtering policy, the micro-segmented filtering policy inside the data center. However, uh, the traffic from the e-commerce 
application out to the internet is also governed by one of these firewalls, a traditional firewall that connects the data center outwards. So the fact that we've micro-segmented the data center allows the information security team to write high-level policy that's much more specific and can differentiate between what's allowed east-west versus what's allowed north-south. Now, the same structure can be used in multiple scenarios. It's not just for a what-if scenario for a new change request. It is also very useful in situations of compliance. So many regulatory compliance standards uh, require organizations to have a security policy. For instance, ISO 27001 is exactly like that. An organization is required to have a policy of what's allowed in the organization and you need periodically to check whether the policy that you've defined is in line with the policy that's actually being enforced by the various filtering technologies inside the data center and out. The same matrix can be used to check whether what's in it is in line with the policies being enforced and identify any kind of uh, violations if there are any produce all the reporting, etc. So this structure is a useful structure for, for information security professionals to use to think about what is supposed to be allowed and what is not supposed to be allowed. And there are technologies that can use it directly to automate various tasks. And using a micro-segmentation project allows this structure to be much more granular and to indicate more specifically what is allowed inside, outside, and into and out of the data center. Thank you for your attention.